Greet you all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we want to thank the Lord that we have this opportunity once again to be able to fellowship with the Lord. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful this morning, dear God, that we can congregate once again, Lord, uh, in thy divine presence, Lord. Uh, Father, I pray, Lord, for your people gathered both locally and abroad, my God. Uh, Lord, that you will minister unto them, my God. You see their hearts, Lord. You see their needs altogether, my God. 
Lord, you see your people, dear God, looking to thee for answers, my God, in a world that is full of trouble, my God. I pray that you will touch those that are sick, my God, those that need a Lord, touch in their inner being, my God. May your presence reach out and minister to them, Lord. Some of them are sick, Lord, on the beds of affliction, my God. I pray that you will meet their needs as well, my God. We pray, dear Lord, for the people, Lord, that are refugees, Lord, out of their war torn areas, my God. Lord, be with them, guide them, and lead them this day, my Father. We commit your word in your hands now. Bless us now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. Brothers and sisters, we are thankful once again that we can fellowship uh, in God's presence. Uh, we have a message this morning. We're entitling it uh, Perplexity and Distress Amongst Nations. Perplexity and Distress Amongst Nations. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, uh, as uh, we look at this subject this morning. We're going to turn in the book of Luke, chapter 21, and verses 25. And uh, we read the scripture there. The Lord Jesus Christ speaking. And he says, And there shall be signs in the sun, and the moon, and in the stars, and upon earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. My brothers and sisters, uh, we have uh, lived now in a certain designated period of time that we talked in past messages about uh, the time of trouble. My brothers and sisters, we know it's a specific arena of time and we know in other places, uh, God calls it uh, the latter days. We know many times we have used the references, uh, we're living at the end time. And uh, we truly can say that we have passed through phases uh, over the past uh, two to three years. Uh, you see uh, the uh, pestilences that have come on the scene uh, and what it has caused mankind uh, to come to. Uh, and as soon as man was trying to come out of that, Brothers and sisters, we see that uh, now uh, the world is facing uh, a uh, different kind of a situation that has been down through time. Uh, but uh, we have to be able in our mind to put this in its right per uh, perspective. Because when Daniel lived in his hour, brothers and sisters, uh, he sought the face of the Lord. You know, uh, he didn't close the prophetic word. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, he knew what was written in the scriptures concerning Cyrus. And when Belshazzar was having his feast, uh, Daniel was not uh, blank to what was happening uh, in other countries. Uh, brothers and sisters, he knew uh, that man's name was recorded in the scriptures uh, a long time ago. Brothers and sisters, and he knew uh, when he was called uh, to be able to interpret the handwriting on the wall, he was not in a blank. He knew uh, that something was going to change. Uh, brothers and sisters, likewise, when Jesus told his disciples, he told them, uh, when you see Jerusalem surrounded with armies, know <laughs> that this is the time that you can't stay in the city. You must leave the city. Now, my brothers, that was for bygone days. We are living at this hour of time, and we have to understand uh, there are certain things uh, that are transpiring. Now, I re realize the religious world out there, some of them, as we said last week, uh, Raz, look at this conflict that is taking place uh, in Ukraine. Well, uh, this is maybe Armageddon. It's leading to Armageddon. Others, well, this is uh, Ezekiel 38 uh, and 39. Uh, the religious world as a missing piece. They don't have what God gave to the bride at this hour of time. God allowed Brother Branham uh, or Brother Jackson to have a dream. And it was told to him, he said, uh, now I will let you see the order of my coming. And my brothers and sisters, uh, yes, not everything was given to him. But before Jesus Christ comes, we know they were going to have certain wars take place in this world. So when we are talking this morning, we are not talking from the point 
about tomorrow Jesus Christ is coming because there are certain events to transpire. And if those events haven't transpired uh, concerning the second coming of Christ, his mystical coming, we, we cannot even venture there, though it's not too far away, but we have to look at what is to happen first. So we realize, brothers and sisters, uh, the religious world have a picture and they have a lot of information. But brothers and sisters, some very good men that are on uh, your internet and your Facebook, but they are struggling to put the picture together because Ukraine is not in the scriptures. You can't read it there, so how do you, you know, tie this up? And brothers and sisters, so some way we have to realize uh, we have to look at what is happening. So this morning, I'm going to use uh, quite a few uh, maps, geographical maps, just to show you, brothers and sisters, uh, the importance. I realize uh, it's a long time since we came from uh, a school setting, and uh, our minds may not be as uh, you know, clear. But nonetheless, uh, at least it can give you some kind of a picture of why, what is happening. So we have to look at it from that wise point. But I'm going to run this scripture quick, what Jesus said here. He said, uh, while we realize, brothers and sisters, uh, perplexities are in man's mind because of, for the past almost 16, 17 days, we've been watching just shelling and bombing. And my brothers and sisters, it can cause anxiety, distress, and uh, the word perplexity means being in a state when you don't know what to do. When something happens and you don't know what to do to right the situation. The world has reached this point. They are scratching their heads, they are trying, and many of the things they are doing is sort of helping, but it's not solving the problem. Brothers and sisters, so Jesus said uh, there will be per perplexity, there will be distress, that's anxiety. Men starts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And we know that this will go till, brothers and sisters, uh, that uh, tribulation area comes into being uh, and the day of the Lord uh, comes on the scene. Every day we are watching these things, brothers and sisters, on uh, your TVs. It says when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Now as we said the other week, when Brother Branham said, uh, and the voice spoke and said, uh, watch Russia, watch Russia, keep your eyes on the king of the north. It's not to watch Brothers, uh, just uh, the physical things that are happening there in Russia. you got to watch it through the scriptures because that will show you where it's leading to. Likewise, when the Bible says here, yeah, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. Brothers, uh, the scripture is not saying, well, just look in the sky as if, you know, an angel is going to come uh, or some sign is going to come. We've got to look through the scriptures. That is what makes our inner being look up. And then it says, and lift up your heads. Brothers and sisters, if you just lift up your chin, that's not going to change much. Your inner being has to be spiritually lifted up because you can see uh, your redemption is drawing nigh. In other words, uh, whatever is transpiring in this world uh, is actually pushing us closer to the coming of Jesus Christ. So when the word of God says, look up and lift up your heads, uh, it's not a physical look up. Because, brothers, uh, when the Bible says uh, that there will be a shout uh, and then a voice of an archangel and the dead in Christ shall rise, uh, brothers and sisters, there has to be uh, an awakening message first. That awakening message uh, actually awakens us scripturally. So likewise, when we're looking at world events, it's not just to sit back and look at the screens and say, well, you know, I'm awakened to what's happening. Uh, it has to arouse your inner being uh, to how I should uh, get myself prepared because we'll see that what Jesus said. So I'll read here uh, in verses uh, 29. He says, and he spake to them a parable, behold the fig tree and all the trees. Well, he was pointing to 
that scriptural indicator about Israel. But then it tells us when we are seeing these things, how should it impact us? It says, take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares. So in other words, uh, what events are transpiring is to awaken you so that the coming of the Lord that day does not take you unawares. That we need to keep our minds in a spiritual up, I would say, alert position. And it says, <laughs> for as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. See, it's not upon Israel, but the whole earth. So in other words, uh, this trap, this snare that we've been talking in the past, but to this point where nuclear talk is being talked about. Brothers and sisters, the red button is being talked about. And uh, how has it come about? We just came out of COVID. And suddenly, the world has been pushed into this. We must thank God to a certain extent we're in the Southern Hemisphere. What's happening in Europe is not so much affecting us uh, at this moment, uh, though I will talk later how it will affect us. Brothers and sisters, but if you were in the long queues in Ukraine, trying to get to the borders, little children, people in the churches praying, brothers and sisters, <laughs> you don't know, leaving your husband behind uh, to, to fight a war and the children uh, to go to the borders. It's really a very distressful situation. And uh, in the midst of all that, it's come upon uh, the lives of these people like a trap, like a snare. Now, when people came out of the COVID, brothers and sisters, uh, you know how it was. Uh, suddenly, well, you know, we just have to just forget everything now and restart, reset life. But Jesus said, these things are given to you that that day may not take you unawares. Because remember, we've entered into a different slot of time. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Not just uh, in Ukraine, on the whole earth. And then he said, watch, yea therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. In other words, uh, brothers, uh, there's a world today that doesn't want to hear anything about anything prophetic as such. But remember, these things were placed in there to be able to make you aware how uh, we shift in time. You know, uh, we've had a, a bougainvillea a plant here, and for years it never blossomed. Brothers and sisters, and, uh, but uh, I bought that when we got married, and I planted it. But after so many years, this year, it starts to blossom. And my brothers and sisters, uh, it, it lets me know you cannot control nature. There's a time, even in the spiritual realm, there's a lot of scriptures lying there. And you say, well, you know, it, we'll leave it aside, never come about. But in God's time, it will start to blossom. And spiritually, you have to be awake to know the time. So when the word of God says, watch and pray, so uh, as we look at this, we realize the world will say, well, you know, uh, Ukraine, uh, uh, it has just no connecting point to what we see prophetic. In yes, it is not directly connected, but we have to see how it links up to what is paving the way for what's next. Now, I said a few weeks ago, I think it was the 10th of August, 2021, uh, or the 20th of August, when... Uh, America left Afghanistan. Brothers and sisters, uh, it was a game changer. The world looked upon it while well, they had to leave. But the men in higher posts, men in governments, in, uh, I would say, uh, leading countries, super, seemingly superpowers, they were watching this game. It's like a lion watching its prey. And they began to maneuver in their game rooms how we're going to maneuver ourselves down the road. And you can be rest assured, 
China, Russia, and maybe other nations were already working the plans of once this COVID situations have come over, what do we do? How do we get back? How do we get to the forefront? So brothers and sisters, that is why we have to realize these things was a game changer. And actually, brothers, we have to believe that coming out of Afghanistan was a point that America, I would say, did that caused the other nations to realize there's a weakness here, and we can work on this weakness. And my brothers and sisters, uh, so we were suddenly pushed almost three weeks ago into this conflict. Yes, this man is not somebody that you can link up in the scriptures. But this man, his name is not in the scriptures, but is the ruler of what's written in the scriptures, is the ruler of Russia, that is Magog. Brothers and sisters, uh, we don't know whether this man will reach till the end. He may have a successor, but for the present time, he has all the potentials to fulfill that position that the scripture talks about uh, in Ezekiel 38 uh, uh, as that Gog, uh, the ruler of Magog. But we know, brothers and sisters, at this moment, he's having a difficult time in October. He'll celebrate his 70th birthday. In his mind, what do you think is going on? I need a legacy. I need something. I need a trophy. Not uh, just a small birthday cake. He needs something else. And my brothers and sisters, you can see how uh, he could have sat at the table, his long tables, and worked out his master plans. And as I said, brothers and sisters, we have to realize, scripturally, God looks at, in, at, at certain things in a certain way. We know even from the point of the Antichrist, God shows the office. There have been many men that have come that seemingly, well, you think, well, that's the man, but he, he goes off the scene. But you keep your eyes on that office. You keep your eyes on that ruler. And uh, brothers and sisters, but for now, that's the man that is on ground. So we see, brothers and sisters, uh, we've moved into this conflict. But what is some of the good things we can pull out of this? Because so much of bad that is on the scene. This is in Ukraine. This is the menorah, a mighty big menorah there. It is just as uh, the temple mount for these Ukrainian Jews. Brothers and sisters, they go to another place to go and try and contact their God. And as this war has been taking place, they've been gathering there at the early stages, not knowing what, <laughs> what will happen. But we have to realize uh, in the scriptures in Jeremiah 16, it says, I'll send many fishes and hunters. It's in plural. We know that Hitler was a hunter. There were many other men uh, designated to, to actually petrify, terrify these Jews to go back to the homeland. So likewise, even in our time, God can use certain situations and conditions. And so we see, brothers and sisters, uh, that Israel opened the doorway. There's about 200 to 300,000 Jews in Ukraine. And my brothers and sisters, that's quite a bit. How many of them would be brought into Israel? Uh, brothers and sisters, we don't know. But what does he tell us? God is awakening the nation of Israel as well because they've been caught off guard. Because suddenly this influx of Jews... Uh, and as they came on these airplanes, a lot of them had to stay in the uh, airports. And there was a lot of things said because they were not ready. But it lets us know when really the era of the miraculous takes place, you're not going to get just people coming from Ukraine. You're going to come, people, the Jews are going to flood back the final exodus. And Israel has to be prepared for this. So brothers and sisters, uh, we see these Jews as they come. And, uh, you know, it, may, it really makes your heart joyous to see the President, Bennett, welcoming these Ukrainian Jews, that they have a home. No matter what the story is, you touch down in Israel. So we realize, brothers, that is as much as you could say a good point 
Because scripturally we know how do you tie Ukraine to Israel? We know they're living in the restoration. And the people have to get home. The Bible says I'll hiss for them in every cave and every corner and every place. And my brothers, maybe they didn't want to. Maybe they wanted to make their livelihood in Ukraine. But God has other things. Two prophets are getting ready. There's a message. There has to be 144,000. There has to be the woman of Revelation 12. They can't stay there up in Ukraine and enjoy all of the, the, the good things out there when God has got a message. So somehow we have to believe there will be an exodus. And this is a trickle of what it would be when the final exodus that does come through when Zechariah chapter 12 goes into fulfillment. So we have to see when the word of God says watch. We have to keep our eyes on some right things. But we realize in Russia, brothers and sisters, in 1991, this empire that was great under communism, Soviet Russia, the people began to break away. And that empire lost its status. And my brothers and sisters, uh, but as Putin came in, the presidency in 2000, as he watched these older, I would say individuals dressed like in the Soviet gear, brothers, his mind looks at restoring Russia back to its former glory. How? He was still <laughs> young, probably, in this, this photo. But inside his mind, he's got one thing. If he reaches 70 and plus, Russia has to be on the same footing as the other nations like China and America. Superpower. He could not fathom inside being an underdog. Brothers and sisters, so uh, we have to see inside his mind, when he saw what happened in Afghanistan, he realized his plans have to start rolling. Now this is not my word. It's for you to realize Putin as a man that makes plans, he knows to get rich, you got to have a free way in the roots of trade. To be, I would say, an overcoming military force, you have to make it the quickest to wherever your enemy is. So as it says here, it says a Ukrainian member of parliament from Crimea explained to the independent in a report the importance of the waterway. The Black Sea is Russia's entrance to the world. Now, I've told this in the past, keep your mind on the Black Sea because it is the entrance to the world, including the Mediterranean and the Atlantic spheres of influence. Because they live so close uh, to the snow areas, that there's no way that they can come quickly on the other side, uh, this waterway to the Black Sea. And Ukraine, brothers, borders that at the bottom. We'll show the pictures of it soon. A 2020 report also highlighting the importance of the Black Sea to Russia has said, the Black Sea is important because of the significant access that it affords to Russia. In particular, access to the global sea lines of communication and opportunities to project power and a strategic distance and expand its air and coastal defenses. Now my brothers, the important thing in this is that the Black Sea is uh, the entrance to the world. So brothers and sisters, uh, it's the entrance to the world not only from trade point of view but also from a military point of view. And we know brothers and sisters uh, that Scripturally, Russia, if it has to fight its wars, it cannot allow Ukraine to have the freeway all the time. So somehow, it had to move to do something to overcome that. This is the Black Sea. Uh, we don't have a world map here, but you see where Russia is? This is Ukraine. This is Crimea. This is what they've taken over, and the Donbass somewhere here brothers and sisters, because they want this entire border 
free. Russia wants free way into the Black Sea because, brothers and sisters, then it can go into the Mediterranean Sea. And we realize they're fighting here for other reasons and purposes, but in his mind, he wants the way through this. So I'm going to go through a few charts. So you see where Russia is here. This is the Black Sea. Brothers and sisters, this is the open doorway into the entrance of the world. This is where Turkey is. Just to show you how important that was. This week, brothers and sisters, uh, Russia put one of its uh, military uh, ships on the entrance of the Mediterranean and the end of the Mediterranean and blocked the way for the United States and I think it was France or some other ship that was there. That lets us know what a game, how simple to play the game. When you have this waterway all open to yourself, you just have someone in the back and someone in the front. It's like you, you tr try to look for an entrance and you see your enemy there. So you have to realize that's the game plan. Brothers and sisters, uh, and uh, this happened this week. So you can see. Brothers and sisters, Russia, it wants to take over Ukraine. It wants this area free. So it can, it wants this, this waterway uh, all to itself. And so that it can go through these straits here, enter the Mediterranean Sea, and see how short where Israel is. Israel is here. This is the shortest way to Israel. They, they spend all the time in Syria. Instead of coming all around, by the time they get there, they're not going to get. So brothers and sisters, so we realize uh, there's a bigger plan in this whole thing. They want to move quickly in this way. We know that Ezekiel 38, there's going to be a land drop of soldiers, but also there's going to be ships involved. So brothers, keep in mind how close Israel is to this area. So the shortest way, Ukraine, you, you have to give this to us. And if you don't give it to us, we're going to bombard you and we're going to make you surrender to it because we've got a bigger plan. We've got looking at bigger things. So we see, brothers and sisters, as this has taken place, the world at large that has seen a little nation, uh, I don't say little nation, but a big nation, 44 million, but uh, a very, very, I would say the people have got a good spirit. And my brothers and sisters, uh, but yet Europe, NATO, brothers and sisters, uh, and the United States of America, they, they realize if they step on Ukrainian land, you're going to have World War III. They don't want World War III. Brothers and sisters, uh, that is when all the nations of the world are involved. And, that, and really that's, brothers, down the road where Armageddon is going to come into being. It doesn't mean that you won't have conflicts at the moment and situations like that. But for them to put boots on the ground, that's going to lead to this catastrophe. And brothers and sisters, so they said we'll send military and we'll use sanctions. And brothers and sisters, uh, we have not felt the effect of it as yet in its fullest sense. The only thing we felt was oil. Brothers and sisters, uh, uh, groceries, uh, our cooking oil went up, almost double the price. Brothers and sisters, but that may be some businesses taking advantage. They're selling old stock for more profit. Brothers and sisters, but in time, this is going to affect the world, remember, Russia and Ukraine, they supply the world, I think they are in second position, to the world fertilizer. And we know that Russia supplies oil and gas to Europe as well. They depend on it. And my brothers and sisters will we'll say, well, what impo important is this? Brothers and sisters, the air we breathe contains 78% nitrogen. It's important with oxygen as well for our body to, to sustain itself. Plant life has to have fertilizer. And the fertilizer that they make 
contains nitrogen together with other components so that you can produce quick crops to supply the nations of the world. And to give you a quick example, to have six kilograms of cereal, you need one kilogram of nitrogen fertilizer. That is the only way you can supply the world with food. And if fertilizer is stopped, then you cannot produce the food for the world. And that reminds me of a scripture found in Isaiah chapter 3. I will take away the staff of water and bread. And brothers and sisters, uh, these scriptures are all there. And one would wonder how it will come into being. But the world, brothers and sisters, uh, are forgetting. That's why Jesus said, uh, like a snare is going to come. So yes, that's one way. But these sanctions have affected in other ways. Brothers and sisters, uh, you remember what Brother Branham said while he was preaching. He said, you remember church, that you're living in the best day that you ever will live right now until Jesus comes. It shall gradually, not gradually, but rapidly get worse and worse. When Russia goes down there to get that oil, look out. That's all she needs. That's what the prophet said it would do and we are ready for it then. Brothers, Brother Branham in his mind, he didn't preach it in a length and breadth uh, sermon, but inside his mind, he could have read Ezekiel 38 and 39. He could have seen one day how Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel spoke about this. Brothers, we thought, well, how will this go into effect? Brothers and sisters, uh, when we see the largest proven oil reserves countries, Venezuela is the largest in the world, but for whatever their political problems were, they went off the scene that they couldn't produce and, and supply the world. But next is Saudi Arabia. Remember, brothers, the king of the north is got his eyes in the Middle East. She's got this amount. Russia doesn't have so much of oil, but it has 80,000 million barrels a day. But it is closest to Europe, and therefore it is a quick supplier. Kuwait. Middle East, Canada, that's North America and South America, Iran, brothers and sisters, uh, there you got Iraq, the uh, United Arab, uh, Arab Emirates. What does it tell you there? The composition, leave alone Venezuela, it's too far away from Europe, brothers and sisters. Russia will be keeping its eyes on these Middle Eastern countries. Israel is not there, but brothers, because it's found lately oil and gas. Brothers and sisters, but therefore, if there's going to be anything done for others to supply the United States as well as Europe with oil and gas, Russia is going to do something about it. That is why, brothers and sisters, Russia doesn't come there because it itself doesn't have oil. It wants to keep its pulse where the money is. Because if I shut the taps, I want all the rest to shut the taps. And so, brothers and sisters, you can see from this that, brothers and sisters, uh, Russia will have its eyes on the oil. That's another diagram that shows you the oil re uh, reserves. Brothers and sisters, you can see Venezuela, how much it has, Saudi Arabia, Canada. And my brothers and sisters, that lets us know that Russia <coughs> will no doubt be looking to the Middle East, now we come to the point, living the oil, there's a trade war. Brothers and sisters, uh, the United States of America, I think it was Thursday or Friday, brothers and sisters has hit Russia that it will have no free bargains. In other words, uh, all of its items that it's going to sell, it can raise the trade. You know what happened here, brothers and sisters, a few years ago when we had a textile industry here? that anybody bought cloth from textiles here, they raised the trade uh, price on it. Whereas things coming from China and the rest had a free trade zone that our products couldn't sell. And overnight, our industries went down. 
Likewise, that's what the United States and Europe has done. Brothers and sisters, no free trade zone. We lift up the tariffs. Nobody is going to buy from you. Brothers, they said by this coming week that Russia would basically go bankrupt because there's no movement. And my brothers and sisters, so, so we see, though there is not on ground a, a military war, there's an economical war that is affecting nations. And my brothers and sisters, uh, how Ukraine gets tied up with this prophetically because it's paving the way for what is to happen in the Middle East. Because brothers and sisters, uh, Russia is going to say, I can't stay quiet. I'm going to regain my finance and my money. And firstly, its war is not going to be what is going to be Ezekiel 38 and 39. It's going to be a pro feeding the proxies with weaponry, supply Gaza, supply Iran, supply Egypt, supply Syria, supply Iraq with armaments. And you sit back and you fight the war. And so we have to see, brothers, how this is paving towards the Middle East war. These are brothers and sisters. There's much more now because this was 2nd March. There are many, many, I would say, industries and uh, uh, businesses that have closed down or left their markets out of Russia. They've come out. And what Russia has said, you leave everything there, you're not getting nothing when you come back. All belongs to us. So brothers and sisters, this is just a few. It wouldn't fit in here. Brothers and sisters, Google, PayPal, Sony, Toyota, Zoom, YouTube, brothers, all. They've got their own internet and their own. Brothers and sisters, it's so sad that they've done this. I read a little article of a, 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 young, ch a young teenager or an or a, a individual that found his father in Russia. And he said, Daddy, he said, the Russian soldiers are here. They are bombing everything. And his father said, son, don't worry. He said, the soldiers are there to protect you. They're fighting against uh, the Nazis. And his son realized, my daddy is all uh, brainwashed. Brothers and sisters, uh, because is they're not hearing to anything else. And he was an IT uh, specialist, so he decided... Uh, to start up an app to be able to feed back into Russia how wrong the people's thinking is. Because brothers, they're innocent people. They don't know what's going on. So you have to see the world markets for Russia is zeroing down. There's a trade war. And my brothers and sisters, we're in the southern hemisphere. We haven't feel the, the ripples and the vibrations fully as yet. But you can be assured. It continues this way, it's going to head our way, one way or the other. That's why the word of God says, watch and pray and be close to the Lord. Because uh, remember, brothers and sisters, uh, it says it shall come as a snare to them that are dwelling on the face of this earth. Brothers and sisters, this is, again, I know I'm playing a few extra maps so that you can be refreshed in your mind. This is Russia, this is Ukraine. This is, brothers and sisters, the Black Sea. This is the Sea of Azov. This is what Russia has taken over Crimea and Donbass area. They took this area, brothers, because they want a free way to the Black Sea. They want all that Ukraine produces. Brothers, they pr produce all the wheat and oats and rye. They will have no shipping ports to take their supply to the, to the world. And so we see that going on at the moment. From this Black Sea area, two names, Bosphorus and the Dardanelles. I've heard about that, but I never think much in, in my days in school. But it is two important straits from the Black Sea. Remember on top here is Russia. If you have to come through, you have to go through these straits in order to go into the Mediterranean Sea. Turkey has the right to open or close. Turkey is, you know, all the way with Russia. It is a NATO power, but brothers, they play the same game. 
So that is why these two places, the, the Bosphorus and Dardanelles Straits, if Russia controls these places, no doubt in time, one way or the other, they will be able to send all the ships. Brothers, they'll shut off the areas there and they'll shut off on this end. All the ships inside there will be under their control. Brothers and sisters, sir, this is going back to the Crusader times to make you realize how important is to have trade routes. Maybe they didn't have so much of maritime routes, which they had a few, but today you can see, brothers and sisters, these are all trade routes for the past thousand years. Brothers and sisters, uh, from Jerusalem going up to Europe, can you see? And my brothers and sisters, uh, all these things were so important. So Putin, when he was sitting for the past two years, he wasn't wasting time. Inside his plan is going on. But we've got to understand the word of God tells us God puts in the minds of men to fulfill his plan. My plan will stand. He wasn't going to the fields and thinking. He was, how can my nation become a superpower again? Brothers and sisters, he knew about this a long time ago. Remember, brothers and sisters, when you can come in here through the Black Sea and you lock this point up here, you've got this point locked up here. Brothers, what can Europe do to come in and save Jerusalem? That is why the word of God says, I will, I've done this alone. Brothers and sisters, now that we see that Russia sees that she's sanctioned and that air oil, brothers and sisters, uh, is not going to be bought so much, and I guess, and brothers and sisters, uh, she's realizing there's going to be other nations that is going to open the door. Venezuela got a lot of uh, oil, Saudi Arabia and Israel. So what should I do in my game plan? Brothers and sisters, I must make sure they don't supply Europe with the oil. That's what Brother Branham said, and when the king of the north goes down for oil. Brothers and sisters, he may have not went into some of what I've went into, but under inspiration he said that, the word of God says in Ezekiel 38 or 39, where, why have you come down here? Have you come down for silver and gold and booty? And brothers and sisters, spoil? What spoil? To be able to see how to control that Middle East. And my brothers and sisters, so we see Chevron. This is an American uh, company. They have said that Israel will be able to meet the demands of Europe. And whatever finances that will be needed, because the reason it was stalled is Israel needed finances to complete this, this pipeline, the gas pipeline. And Chevron from the United States of America have come on board, and they said, yes, they can do it. And so this pipeline that is from Israel to Europe, brothers and sisters, uh, they have now I would say working on it, sanctioning it, so that when Europe needs more gas, Israel will be able to supply it as with other nations. Brothers and sisters, that pipeline is called the East Med Pipeline. And my brothers, it runs from Israel. We know and showed last week how prophetically that Asia will dip its feet in oil. And my brothers and sisters, the oil that is under Golan we know, brothers and sisters, that pipeline runs right up to Europe. And you think uh, Putin is not looking at that and saying, well, you know, my oil, nobody's buying it. And they're buying, brothers and sisters, jealousy will come inside his bosom. I've got to shut it down. And so that's the pipeline, brothers, the East Med pipeline that Israel has. And we're going quickly through other scriptures now. We see the word of God in Jeremiah chapter 30 verses 1 and 2. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel saying, Write thee all these words that I have spoken unto you in a book. God told Jeremiah, write it in a book. The reason it was to be written 
It was to be carried to our time. Because if not, people will say, well, somebody is just talking of the mind. Write it in the book, Jeremiah. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers, and they shall possess it. This is a process, it's an ongoing process, right up till now from Ukraine, people are coming to Israel. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel, concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice. So after the prophecy writes, suddenly the Lord says, we have heard a voice. In other words, uh, it is uh, mankind is beginning to portray a certain emotional depiction of something that's happening. Brothers and sisters, uh, a voice of trembling. I read there shall be distress and perplexity. A voice of trembling of fear and not of peace. Brothers, over the past week or two, the nations of the world have been sitting on the fence. How do we do? What do we do? This man is going to do that. And we realize that if Ukraine doesn't surrender, brothers and sisters, Putin is not going to go away as a game loser. He knows what he wants, and he knows he has the potential to get it, and he's stopping everything else. And my brothers and sisters, if the people that are still there and the soldiers of Ukraine do not surrender and give in, then what he did in Syria, what he did in Chechnya, what he did in other places, they bombed and they shot and killed and then they st started to use chemical warfare. Brothers and sisters, bombs devastate buildings. But if the people go into the bunkers and you say, well, they're still alive and they're still you know, talking, what do you do? As, and it's a world crime to do this you bomb the place with chemicals. The, the chemicals go down and they go to the bunkers. It's no difference to what Hitler did. Hitler did it in an old way. He let the people into the gas chambers. But in modern time, it's, a, it's the same way, but it's doing the same thing. That is why, brothers and sisters, I pray and hope as much as the people can get out of that place as quick as possible. I realize the the president has got a certain mind and, and, and he has to play his, his part. But remember, all of this is paving the way for a day that God will deal with all of this on the mountains of Israel. But the religious world, they, they cannot connect the picture. Well, how do we jump from Ukraine to Ezekiel 38 and 39? We're not going to go to Ezekiel 38 and 39. We're going to go to a beautiful era where God's going to deal with Israel and with Michael and if Putin is still the man there, brothers and sisters, uh, I would have to say he's going to regret all that has been done. And brothers and sisters, therefore we see this is what is being played daily on your newsstands. Ask you now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hand on his loins as a woman in travail and all faces are turned into paleness. Brothers and sisters, you have to see this week how people have rushed, brothers and sisters, uh, from country to country, from country to country. And what's on that face? Brothers and sisters, it's all blood has been taken out. They are shocked state. But it's played a two-way role. In other words, Putin's fear has caused the ten horns of the beast, brothers and sisters, uh, to rise in its military might for its part down the road. And also, brothers and sisters, it's paving the way for the era of the miraculous. So we see this is the world's picture. Alas, for that day is great so that, n that n none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Remember, Jacob's trouble is the end picture that is in Daniel 70th week, the second part of Daniel 70 weeks. But 
The time of trouble doesn't start there. It starts now. That is why we are seeing this picture beginning to evolve and come on the scene. It is even that time of trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. That means Israel will be saved out of it then. But now we see it says, therefore it shall come to pass in that day. In other words, Israel is standing at a crossroads now. And you know, Israel has tried, tried its best not to get involved in this Ukraine war. Because remember, prophetically, God has got another timepiece for her to be fully engaged in. But as for her people, she has to do what she has to do for, from the point of the Jew. The reason being, to a certain, I would say, position, there is still a certain yoke on Israel. The United States still dictates, you do this, you do that. Europe says, you do, do this and you do that, that. So, politically, Israel doesn't have the power to break loose. So there has to be a designated moment of time. Just as I talked about uh, the flower plants. Remember, that yoke is going to be broken. But it's not going to be broken by a politician. Because all the politicians have played the game. Joe Biden, he don't want to step into Ukraine. The ten horns of Europe, they're playing their role because they have another role to play. And brothers and sisters, uh, Russia locked them up and said, you go there, you'll get nuclear war, you'll get World War III. Now he went a step further and he said, even if you send military might, it will be a military target. So what does it mean? It leaves Ukraine to slowly be dwindling and dying with no manpower, no gunpowder, no weaponry, no food. And brothers and sisters, uh, Putin will achieve what he wants to. We have to realize, brothers and sisters, the game doesn't end there. It's a paving position to what is going to be. That God is going to break his yoke. In other words, Israel's eyes is opening. What the United States of America did in Afghanistan, they will do to us. What they did in Ukraine... They'll do to us when Russia comes breathing down our shoulders, which nation is going to come to us? So, some way between this and that, there's actually a breaking of his yoke. That I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds and strangers no more shall serve themselves of him. In other words, Israel is being set for a day where Michael is going to come down What's going to do it? The Bible says, And it shall come to pass in that day, that his burden shall be taken away from thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and thy yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. That's the Holy Spirit anointing. Brothers in Europe and in uh, Ukraine, uh, all they can do is give them uh, uh, military might, give them this, no anointing. No supernatural power, brothers and sisters, but when it comes to Israel, it's a different ball game altogether. That is why Putin, if he's that man at that time, he's going to face uh, a different situation altogether. Because remember, there's going to be pillars of fire that's going to be seen. Brothers, uh, they'll see one plane there and suddenly they'll see a thousand planes. They can burst every chemical warfare, it'll be ineffective. Why? The yoke is going to be broken because of the anointing. And remember, in a similar structure, when that era of the miraculous takes place, uh, God's going to deal with the bride of Jesus Christ, uh, yet not in his fullest sense, uh, but you can expect the parallels to run. Because remember, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the Holy Ghost anointing. That's why Bennett, he's not moving this way or that way. He's a Wonderful man, but he doesn't know even what to do. Netanyahu doesn't know what to do. And so they're playing the cards right. But when Michael comes down, you don't play your cards right, you play his card. And brothers and sisters, there's going to be a shockwave to the world. 
brothers and sisters, that is why you have to realize uh, from now to this point uh, that we are talking about in Zechariah 12, uh, you're going to get this economical problems, you're going to have uh, all of these uh, sanctions, uh, all of this going on. Uh, but remember, it's paving the way. And it's going to open that pathway for Putin, for him to the Mediterranean Sea and go to Syria as well as uh, thinking about Israel in time. But when this hour arises, the world has never seen something like this. The yoke shall be broken. Chains are going to be broken from the point of Israel because of the anointing. Brothers, in a similar way, when you've tried everything in life, you try to give up this and give up that, and the world has tried this and tried that. Remember, the Spirit of God is the only thing that can break your chains loose. Brothers, the blood of Jesus Christ was shed by Jesus Christ on Calvary to redeem us and open the doorway to be able to break every chain. That's why, uh, brothers and sisters, there's that song, The Chain Breaker. It takes the anointing to do that. So this world will no doubt get into the darkened way, thinking, well, what's, what, what, what's going to happen next? But remember, at the beginning of time, the word of God said, God said, let it be light. And his spirit pushed darkness and divided the light from the day. In a similar light, this world is going to get dark and people are going to worry. Which nation? Who's going to step in? What's going to be done? Brothers and sisters, I have to say, the picture is paving a way towards that Middle East arena. It doesn't mean, brothers, there won't be other conflicts and situations, but you have to understand scripturally how this connects in the Word of God. So we see, brothers and sisters, again, there's the Black Sea. Putin, he realizes Ukraine had that position to come through the Black Sea, go through those straits, go to, to Europe, go to the world with all. Now he wants to control those waterways, but not only from a trade point of view, he's forced from a trade point of view, but a military point of view. He knows how he needs that so badly. It's played out, you must have heard this. Every time you have a problem with Iran, you hear this word, the Strait of Hormuz. They played this game all the time. They said, all the ships that come for oil, you, you, you do anything, we close this portion here. You stay with the oil there, you can't move out. That's the game they played. And now Putin has got that in his mind. You see that worked wonderfully. And my brother, so these straits, one third of the world's traded oil supplies pass through this strait. That is why, brothers, we see Iran is getting ready for this Iranian deal. And you know what Russia has said? They said, uh, we will not sanction the release because they know Iran got the oil unless America and the other nations remove all the sanctions. Then we will sanction the Iran deal because you can't take away Iran's sanctions and leave the sanctions on me. Can you see, brothers and sisters, how they work? So we realize the Middle East oil is out there. And brothers and sisters, this trait is so important. And Putin has recognized the, the, the Black Sea, how important those traits are. Quickly, we're going to run through here. This army is getting ready not to fight in U Ukraine. Israel's army, the world's most effective army, not because of itself in down the road, but what God will anoint it for. In that day, said the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his riders with madness, and I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. Brothers, it's going to be a sad day. We know this era of the miraculous. Putin and Russia is not on the front line. But, brothers and sisters, uh, eh, I would say branches are out there, like uh, Iraq and Syria and other nations, brothers and sisters, uh, and God's going to actually smite them with blindness. The weaponry that these nations have all come from Russia. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength, 
in the Lord of hosts their God. Brothers, it's only when the governors of Judah comes to the point that they prepare to say Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and we want our Jews to come back. Then we know, brothers and sisters, the army of Israel is going to get a power because she's going to be anointed by Michael itself. And remember what I said a few weeks ago. This is taken out of a contender of Brother Jackson. For the day of vengeance is mine and the year of my redeemed. That is the Jewish people is come. And I looked and there was none to help. This tells you the United States which has given to Israel for the past 50 years money, 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 military equipment and other things. But she is going to be in a bad situation when this develops. America is somehow going to be wrapped up in some kind of a conflict that will keep her from being able to help. We know she's not prepared at this moment to step in from a military point. Already she's wrapped in an economical war. Brothers and sisters, uh, and she, she's going to be embroiled further and further and further. And we don't know whether there will be some small conflicts down the road. But we leave that there. But America is going to be wrapped up with their own problems. That when Russia is saying, well, it's now my time to be able to shut the taps of the Middle East. And that's why in Isaiah 63, when you read it out there, brothers, it says that mine own hands brought help to me. There was nobody with me. So brothers and sisters, we see that how these things have been applicable in our time. At that day, I will make the governors of Judah like an earth of fire amongst wood and like a torch of fire in the sheaf, and they shall devour all the people round about on the right hand and the left hand, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. Brothers and sisters, Putin will not be able to say the Jews cannot go to Jerusalem. That is why in front of us, we're ending towards this seven church age. Time has rolled on. Brothers and sisters, world develop developments has taken place. Yes, we're not waiting the next, which is Ezekiel 38 and 39. That's what the religious world is thinking is going to happen. It's the era of the miraculous that's going to happen first. So what's happening in Ukraine is paving the pathway, brothers and sisters, uh, so that this era of the miraculous will come on the scene. The era of the miraculous after a short space of time will lead to Ezekiel 38 and 39. Because we have to realize, brothers and sisters, we are here as this war is, or conflict is taking place in Ukraine. Putin is playing his cards one way or the other. He's going to get what he wants. And my brothers, whether Ukraine is going to be divided, that's left to see in time. But by that time, he will have that highway through the Black Sea into the Mediterranean Sea to Syria to go as close as Israel. And he's going to allow his proxies that he has pumped them with military equipments. And brothers, Iran is going to say, now it's my time. Let me take a show. Let me do what the, that Iran, uh, Russia tried to do. And the day they tried with Israel, it's going to be a different era of time. Why? God said, I will shake all nations. Why? My temple is not built. I will shake all nations. And brothers and sisters, that temple will go into effect. Our boundary lines is going to be extended. And my brothers and sisters, Jews will come from every area. That's going to make, if Putin is still alive, so mad. And he'll say, I've already created the highway, the marine place, and the pathway. I'm going to come down onto the, the mountains of Israel to fight Ezekiel 38 and 39. But quickly to just show you what the king of the east is doing. 
China. Yes, Taiwan. It goes to show of every world power, they need that, that, that strait. They want to take over this Taiwan so it can have a free way. Why? I've said this before. They want the trade routes to the world. Brothers and sisters, so we have to understand the world since August 2021 they saw Afghanistan brothers and sisters being opened 300 to 400,000 soldiers that were trained when the Taliban when no army came in they left the weaponry and ran away America trained most of them why? They didn't have the same willpower to fight as the Ukrainian people have. I'm not saying that Ukraine is going to win or what is left in the hands of God. But Putin, he had a game plan. He thought, well, I'll sit here, I'll do the same thing. I will walk into Ukraine within two weeks. I'll get it all sorted out. Then going to the third week, it doesn't happen. And you know what he did yesterday? He fired his intelligent generals. You have given me misinformation of how powerful the people of Ukraine were. Ukraine didn't have power militarily. The generals, intelligent as they was, couldn't see the spirit of the Ukrainian people. So, there was misinformation. He miscalculated there. But brothers and sisters, his plan is there. They will fulfill what God has got in his word. That is why I'm thankful to see how these keys and these, uh, I would say, items on the chessboard is playing out. Brothers, it's a wonderful day to be living in. We pray for the people, our hearts go out for them. But we cannot change, brothers and sisters. There's been wars down through time. But we have to watch how this affects Israel. And the day Putin and the king of the north tries through his proxies first, they're going to meet someone they didn't meet. That is going to be God's supernatural power through Michael. And the anointing is going to break the yoke. Same with the bride of Christ. Brothers and sisters, God is going to deal with his church. He's going to touch his people. And yes, they may have went through many things. But brothers and sisters, God is going to change. The season is going to change. And the plants that have never blossomed before, they're going to start blossoming. Because brothers and sisters, the season and time has gone into place. May the Lord bless each and every one of you. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are a thankful people this morning. Lord, only you are able to put a picture in the minds of your children. I pray, Lord, <laughs> take these words, place the picture. Lord, as we watch, help us to pray that we can draw closer to you. That, Father, we will not be counted and found wanting when you, Lord, begin to deal with the bride of Jesus Christ. Bless all your people across the world. Guide them and lead them now. We pray, Lord, for the Jews. We pray for the little ones. We pray for the mothers and fathers, the sick. As they make their way out, Lord, make a way of escape for the innocent people, Lord. And bless, Lord, those that are taking care of the place of Ukraine. We cannot change that, Lord. You have a plan for the place for a purpose and a reason. We commit it now in your hands. We ask these mercies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you this morning. Amen.
Jesus is coming in power to sit on the throne of light, calling every nation before his face, judging men left and right. He'll give the keys to the kingdom to everyone worthy to stand, to those thou walking in. Every day nearer to the day